Okay, it's time to write another test. This time, we're going to be testing that our bird list view controller is populating the table view when it gets new birds. So this portion of the program. This test is going to be an interesting one. We're going to look at a lot of the challenges of testing with views in iOS, particularly when a view controller is involved. We'll also see examples of techniques that we can use in Swift for both object-oriented programming and functional programming as well. So there will be a lot of concepts to cover as we get into how we're going to set up and write this test. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm in Xcode. I'm going to click on my Angry Birds Tests target, hit Command N, and choose a unit test case class. Now I'm going to call this bird list view controller tests dot swift. Once again, we inherit from XC test case. Click create and import our test target. Testable import angry birds. Now we see here the template that we have seen each of the other times that we've created a unit test class. That's good. But this time, we're going to be including more information in the setup than we did previously. I'm going to go ahead and remove teardown here and test performance example so that we are left only with our setup and our test example. Our system under test this time is going to be a bird list view controller. So we type system under test and we set that to a bird list view controller. But this time, our setup needs to be a little bit different than just, in, than just instantiating our bird list view controller. The reason for that is that when we created our bird service, we instantiated that as a class of our own. View controllers are not classes of our own that we instantiate whenever and wherever we need them. Rather, iOS handles the instantiation of our view controllers as it needs them as a user goes through our application. So we need to use the instantiation method that iOS provides for those view controllers, or else it won't have the views, segues, and other components of a view controller set up for us to have access to in the test. This is going to get a little bit wordy, so I'll try to explain as I go. The first thing we're going to need access to is the uh, the super setup method. So in case anything is happening above this, we now have access to that. Next, we assign our storyboard. So we're instantiating now a storyboard. The name of our storyboard is going to be main. This is the default name of a storyboard, and it's why your storyboard file is named main.storyboard. We'll also be using the main bundle. All right, so now we've got a storyboard object. Next, we need to use the storyboard object to get a hold of the first view controller that is created when the app is launched. So we will do storyboard dot instantiate initial view controller. And we know by looking at our main.storyboard that our initial view controller is a navigation controller. And so we're going to cast our view controller as that, as navigation controller. We'll call this navigation controller. Beautiful. And the name of this is not navigation controller, it is UI navigation controller, just like most of the view controllers and other uh, tools provided by UIKit. 
Okay, so we have our navigation controller. We know that the navigation controller's job is to manage other view controllers. And so we'll ask our navigation controller to give us a reference to the view controller that we need to test, the bird list view controller. So that's going to be navigation controller dot top view controller. This is the view controller that's currently on top of the navigation controller stack. We're going to cast that to a bird list view controller. And we'll name that, uh, or rather we'll assign that to our system under test. Now we have our bird list view controller named system under test, so that's good. We aren't quite done yet though. Our system under test has been assigned, but we have not launched the app yet and caused the view controller to appear on screen. We also haven't triggered the view to get set up. Here's how we'll do those things. So first we need access to our UI application, and then we need access to its shared state, specifically the windows available in it. Now once upon a time, this attribute was called the key window in iOS, and the key window was the one window that appeared uh, on screen on your device. Now, since iOS 13, we can have multiple different windows at once, and that's so that we can have different scenes visible on the same screen in iOS at the same time, particularly useful for tablet applications. But if you see uiapplication.shared.keywindow somewhere, that's what you're seeing. It's deprecated. You'll probably see a yellow warning message next to it. So what we're going to do here is we need to take all of the windows that might be available in this application and get the one that we want. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to filter the array of windows. We can do that with dot filter in iOS. Let me put it on one line to start like this. So what do we pass to filter? We pass it a block. Filter is one of the functional methods that we have access to within the Swift API. So inside of our filter block, we can say, we can give a name to the item that we want to access in the closure. So we are filtering through a list of windows. It would make sense if we refer to each one as a window, right? And then we use our closure syntax of in to indicate this is the argument to our filter method. I want to return whether the window whether the window is the key window. Now if that returns true, then our window will be included in the final result. And if that returns false, then that window will be excluded from our final result. Now with our key window list, we are going to assume that there is only one and we're going to get a hold of the first one. So now we have our key window. Now what we need to do is go to that key window and ask it for its root view controller. We'll then assign that to our system under test. Now this looks a little bit complicated. There is one simplification step that we can do, which is that when we are writing functional Swift, provided that we want to access each item in a collection individually, we don't have to name it in this way. Instead, we can use some syntactic sugar that gives us access to that item. Dollar zero. Finally, I'm going to change the way that I have split up these lines to create a column that makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. I'm getting a hold of the windows, I'm asking for the key windows out of those, taking the first of that, and assigning its root view controller. There's one more step in our setup that we need to do. And this one's a little bit tricky, and I'll explain why we're doing it. First, I want to assert 
that our navigation controllers view is not nil. Navigation controller dot view. I also want to assert not nil on our system under test view. Why are we doing assertions in a setup in a setup method? That's a good question. We're not actually doing this to ensure that those views aren't there. Views in iOS our, are lazily evaluated, which means that they will be instantiated and presented at the time that an object is asking for them. So until we reference dot view for a view controller, that view doesn't become available to us. But we need that view to be available in order to access items on our view and test that those items on our view are behaving the way that we want them to. There are a number of different ways that you could do this. You could also assign them this way, and that would accomplish the same thing. That having been said, it can be confusing for folks to see that we are assigning an ignored variable to this thing that we reference. So instead, it's a little bit clearer to reference it and then ensure that it is there. Great. Let's move on to our test itself. What do we want to test? Well, I want to make sure that the table view is updating with our bird information. So I'm going to say test table view loads birds. Now, you'll recall that the way our bird list view controller works is we instantiate a bird service inside of view did load, and then we get our birds back from that bird service. Now, if we were to test our view controller as is right now, then our bird service would call birds from the real API. We discussed why it was important in the last video to have an integration test to ensure that our API was up. But we don't want all of our tests of functionality to rely on that API. If this test were to rely on the API, which is a completely different set of functionality from what this test is testing, it truly would be flaky and not for the reasons that we would typically want to accept flakiness. When we're testing that the view controller is responding to the correct inputs from bird service, we want to guarantee that those correct inputs are provided. So we are going to create a test double for our bird service. Test doubles are objects that we use for testing that we use in place of real objects in order to ensure a certain output from one of their methods or attributes. There are several different types of test double, but we'll be writing one of the most common ones today, a mock. So for now, what I'm going to do is skip over the test itself, and we're going to go ahead and create a mock object here. Let's call it mock bird service. Now we could have our bird service and our mock bird service both implement the same API. But before we do that, we have a little bit quicker approach that I'm going to take right now and we can consider refactoring later, which is that I'm going to have the mock bird service inherit directly from the bird service. Now I'll be overriding methods on the bird service here so that we can use that same API in our test. So let's give this a variable of mock birds. That's going to be an array of birds. And then we'll also give that a mock error, and that's going to be an optional error. Let's actually make them both optional. Finally, I want to override a function on our bird service, get birds. And all I'm going to do in this method, I'm not going to make an HTTP call. All I want to do is call my completion handler, the thing that was passed in to me by the caller, with my mock birds and my mock air.
That way, whatever I have set up with the Mockbird service, I can rest assured that that's what's going to be returned when GetBirds is called.